Hi guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Judy Cho and I am a nutritional therapy practitioner. I have a private practice where I work with clients to get to root cause healing. And oftentimes that requires a meat-based elimination diet and doing a lot of gut healing. Today's episode is sponsored by Carnivore Cure. If you are following a meat-based diet and have questions, or if you want to share some of the science with your friends and family, or just want to understand a little more, make sure to check out Carnivore Cure. It has over 150 colored graphics and resources that you can always turn to. There are also over 10 bonus guides that you can download following the URLs that are in the book. All right, so let's get right into this episode. From what I'm hearing from you, you've worked on a lot of the mental aspect of your relationship with food because that's one other thing I notice is a lot of people come to carnivore and they're like, this is it. This is what's going to make me lose weight. And I can almost... um, kind of live with my eating disorder and just let it be healthier. But I really think we also need to work on our relationship with food, which it sounds like you have. Do you have any insight for the people that are watching this? Yes. (laughs) Gosh, I don't even know how to say this because I was really messed up. I mean, I used food to comfort myself. I used it out of boredom. Uh, I was a compulsive overeater and I remember laying in bed one night, rolling back and forth and crying because I was in so much pain because I had eaten too much, Mm -hmm. way too much. And at that point I realized this is bigger than me and I, I can't do this. And I'm a Christian. So I just prayed and I said, Lord, if you don't help me, I will never be able to overcome this. And I made a commitment I, to the Lord. I said, I'm, I'm, I can commit to one day of not overeating at a time. And I realized I can't even do that if you don't help me. It was the hardest thing I ever went through. It was harder than getting off of sugar. I, I believe. And, uh, but I, it took six months. It took six months. But at the end of six months, I had totally won the battle. And I would have to tell myself, you know, when I would want to start grazing and just eating all the time, you're going to get to eat again. And I'd look at my watch, you know, in two hours. And of course I had, I had to teach myself to stop eating because I didn't really have a trigger. So I just had to train myself on uh, portion control. And uh, after a while that trigger kicked in and I knew I don't like to be full now, even now I don't eat when I'm full. I, I just know when I'm done sure. and it's, if I get full, then I'm uncomfortable and I'll usually start getting indigestion. So, uh, but it's just, you know, I don't, I, I wish I had like a, like a secret ingredient or something for people, but I think it's just a matter of you have to make up your mind that it's something you're going to do. And then don't look at it like it's for the rest of my life because you'll, you won't last. You have to take it one day at a time and just commit yourself to doing the best you can every day. And I, I would also, another thing I did that really helped me is I would just imagine myself eating normally and see myself the way I, I wanted to look. Cause of course I was overweight. I weighed over 200 pounds at that time. Okay. So, um, it's just a journey, you know, and uh, it's, I think it's good if you know other people that you, that, you know, you can call or talk to that can support you through it. I didn't have any of that. So I had the Lord, (laughs) but uh, that was how I got over the overeating. And then just from eliminating the things that, you know, eating clean, I was really motivated because I wanted to feel better. So what about the times then, that you would turn to food, right? So um, when you're stressed or you're trying to escape or you're bored, how did you fill that time with something else and not go back to eating? Gosh, it's been so long. Let me see. How did I do that? So while you're thinking, um, I can share a little bit about, um, so I, 
and I, I actually never have probably talked about this um, publicly, but so I went to um, eating disorder facility and I went to the intensive one, but then I went on a second kind of stint because I just wanted to make sure that the upkeep was good. And so I only did a shorter one where it was only three, four hours. And then when I was in there, I met a lot of different people and some of them, you know, were also addicted to alcohol or drugs or something else. And then one of the last days when I was kind of, you know, feeling deflated that I was back in one of these um, rehab places, there was a lady that came in and she was in her seventies. And then that hit me because I was like, I thought eating disorders were only for 20 year olds. Right. And, um, and I can't believe I'm 30 and I'm still here. And then seeing a lady in her, you know, older, and she might've been older. I'm not even sure. Um, I'm just guessing. She definitely looked older than you though, but you look really good. Like I said, but she, you know, looked very weathered. Um, and I, it was heartbreaking to see her because I realized this is a disease. If you never deal with it, we'll be with you forever. Right. <laughs> oh, I get so emotional all the time, but, um, and so I talk with her a little bit and I, I know that she ended up healing. And then I think at one point she went back because I wonder if so much of it is the wrong diet, right? Because none of us were ever fed in there to eat meat. If you wanted to be vegetarian, you totally could in there. And so when I saw her, I realized if I don't work on this, I'm going to suffer forever because exactly right. like that lady was there and she would talk about her loving husband and all that. And I just remember thinking, I don't, I don't want to be here at that age. Right. And so I think it's so important to work on the food aspect because absolutely you can work on the nutrition, you could work on the lifestyle, but if you don't ever work on your relationship with food, which I think so many people want to deny that there is a food issue, right? Or that, oh, I don't have an eating disorder. I don't throw up. I don't do this or that. So I'm not sick, but it's much more than that. Right. So if you turn to food to comfort or for whatever reason, and it's, it's your, it's your crutch. And if you don't have that crutch, how do you deal? And if you can't deal, then there is something there. And like you said, you use God and that's a huge, right. So like, that is how I deal with a lot of hardship too. So it gives me comfort, right. So people have to find that. And that's why I'm bringing it up because I think it's so important to talk about that. We need that part of the healing and that has nothing to do with carnivore. It will make it easier if you eat the right foods, but carnivore is not going to heal disordered eating. And so if you want to continue with what you were going to say. Yeah, I just, I just, I totally agree. And yes, it can go on for your whole life. I mean, I'm 78 and I feel like I'm still making strides in that area. You know, I still wish I was skinny and I'm not going to be skinny. And I just want to, and I'm not saying that as, you know, negative, but I don't need to be, you know, we have so much pressure in our culture, especially in women to look a certain way. And the women in the magazines, those, those have all been Photoshopped. They don't even look like that. And, uh, you know, people talk about their ideal weight. Well, you know, for me, my ideal weight was, you know, the skinniest I could possibly be. And, uh, and, and I, I couldn't achieve that without starving myself, which is not sustainable. And of course, it's very unhealthy. Right. So I think, you know, if we just choose to not overeat, and to eat clean, our bodies will let us know what it does and doesn't need because they're very smart. I mean, your body's a miracle. It really is. It is. It's just an amazing piece of equipment. And we really don't know that much about it. You know, I, the more I learn about the body, and I, I've always been fascinated with physiology and anatomy and all of that. Um, my husband and I spent hours sitting at the kitchen table talking about his patients. And I used to read his medical magazines. And I, it just was... I've always been very interested in, in medicine and nutrition. And uh, so, you know, how do we know what our ideal weight is? Because we usually choose that based on what we think we should be looking like. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I think if we're willing to just focus on health and let our bodies speak to us and tell us, because as you start getting healthier, you get better signals. You know, you're not, your brain isn't, isn't intoxicated all the time with whatever excitotoxins were in the last bag of Oreos that you ate. Right. And so you, you begin to listen to your body and it'll start telling you and it'll find the ideal weight for your body. And, uh, but to me, the biggest struggle has been overcoming the whole pressure of a certain image, even at 78. 
<laughs> you know? And I, so, yeah, it's really important to, as you say, heal your relationship with food. And that takes time and it practice. And one thing that I did do a lot of, I used to keep a notebook and I had all kinds of things, positive confessions that I wrote down about myself and my life. I would go through each area of my life, you know, my financial life, my spiritual life, my emotional life, my physical life, my relationships. And I would write down as if it had already happened, what I wanted to achieve in each one of those areas of my life. And that helped me to begin to develop a new self image and to uh, start to see myself the way that I, that I wanted to be and, and, to move towards achieving that. I don't do that anymore, but uh, it helped me a lot in my earlier years when I was working on my relationship because it was connected to so many other things, right. Right. you know, rejection and fear and many things that food could fill that void for me. So um, it's a long journey. And I think we have to be patient with ourselves and just keep, moving forward the best we can and to get whatever help that we need to do right. that. And, and I fully agree with that. I mean, even me with all the healing I've done, even now being, you know, a, like a certified nutritionist, all of that still, I mean, there are days that sure, if when I was plant-based and I was maybe 10, 15 pounds thinner, there are days that I'm like, oh, I wish I was like that. And days that I'm eating less and I'm, I notice like, oh, oh, well, maybe I could just skip eating the rest of the day, but I know, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the biggest, um, rem like, I guess, reminder for me is at my worst days, or even my best days, my kids love me the same. And so that's when I realized it doesn't matter how I look, they care that I'm just there, and that I'm present, and then I'm there for them as a mom. And that is my motivating factor. And then my husband too, loving me, whether I'm 10 pounds heavier or 20 pounds lighter, you know? And so that is, and that's why I think that is so important in a healing journey. And so for me, that's like the reminder, right? So it's like no pant size or the way my body looks perfectly is going to change what really matters in your life. And that's what we need to focus on. And I know Absolutely. it gets so easy. And that's why part of the reason I don't stay on social media a lot. And I tell my clients, it's so easy to compare because we're looking at someone else's body or someone else's healing or someone else's plate. Maybe I should be eating that less or I should be fasting that much or I should be looking like that, but we're so different. And on our deathbed, we're not going to care who was on whose social media and all that. So it's just, you know, we need to focus on what matters. And this is why I talk so much about the food relationship because I think it's so big. It is. And I, you know, I really love what you said because really uh, it's a problem when we're defining ourselves based on what we look like, mm -hmm. because that's not who we are. It's a reflection of who we are, but the real us, you can't really see unless it comes out of you and your personality and your character. All of those things are much more important than what size your body is. If you're, if you're unhealthy, it's much harder to develop your inner man. Yeah. It's much harder because you're, you're not feeling well. When people don't feel well, they, you get depressed. You see things differently. You relate to people differently. So if the reason I'm so fanatical about health is because it affects everything else. Yeah. It affects the way you think. It can affect whether you're depressed or not or whether you have bipolar or whatever your diagnosis is. It affects your ability to be active. It affects your ability to relate to other people so, because we're very synergistic. You know, we're not in boxes. Everything works together. So it's really wonderful if you can get your body and the rest of you to come into agreement together and to flow together. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm still working on is, you know, and getting my body to catch up with my soul and my spirit. <laughs> and I think it's, all of us are, I think all of us are working on that. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, one question I had um, just out of curiosity is that paper you wrote about um, mental health and diet, what was sort of your overarching summary? And like, how does, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, I, because I personally have healed a lot of my depression and anxiety through a meat based diet. And um, so what was your kind of paper um, summarizing? 
Well, I wasn't able to prove that there was a correlation. I just couldn't get, I couldn't, at that point, it was not considered to be, that wasn't considered to be a legitimate thesis, okay. that there would be some relationship between your mood and what you were eating. Right. I mean, even my, uh, doc, the, uh, Dr. Minor, I mean, she was like, that can't possibly be true. And I, and I said, well, I, I'm not that she was really excited that I was writing the, the thesis on this particular subject. But there was just no agreement on that. And there really wasn't a lot of research. I did all the research I could do online. So I ended up studying the brain. Okay. Uh, now, I'm no brain expert. So, you know, I don't want to <laughs> overplay this. But I did, I did study the brain. And, uh, and I, I had to write my own study. So I did write my own study. And, uh, you know, I had a little questionnaire. I had people fill out. And then we had to take statistical analysis. So I do all the stats on it and everything. So I couldn't prove it at the time. The only evidence I had was anecdotal. And, uh, but, uh, but I got an A on the thesis. <laughs> oh, that turned out well. And of course, over time, then all of this evidence began to come out. I think the, the first time I was really aware of it was when Grain, Bank, Grain Brain came out. Oh, okay. What was that? Seven or eight years ago or something? Um, I think it was longer than that, actually. I think it, I thought it came out in the early 2000s. Maybe I might be wrong. Um, Probably. So yeah. Do you um, not struggle with any mood imbalances anymore? Would like depression at all? Do I? Yeah. Do you struggle with any? No, of I don't have any of that. Same with me. I had a little bit of it whenever I was going through this last uh, oxalate. Dump. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And you know, I mean, look, I think the other thing we have to come to terms with is that we're just not going to feel great on, be happy all the time. You know, it just doesn't work that way. It's kind of like your blood pressure. It doesn't stay the same all the time. So, you know, I, we have this illusion that, you know, if we're really healthy, that no matter what, we're just going to, everything's going to be wonderful. And, you know, you have days whenever you're not, you feel a little bit down and then you have other days when you just feel great. Now that's different from what I call falling into a black hole. That that's my experience of depression is you fall into a dark hole and you can't get out. You don't know how you got there and you don't know how you're going to get out. I have not had any of that in years. Not, not since it really that started clearing up when I got off of sugar and the brains. So, uh, but I did take St. John's work for years and years and years, probably 25 years. And that was, of course, I got off of the St. John's work when I started carnivore and I've never gotten back on it and I don't have any depression. And I was also going to, I remembered one of the other things that I struggled with was hypoglycemia and it just ran my life. Cause you know, when you're hypoglycemic, you have to eat every three hours or so. And uh, I don't have that anymore either. And that really has something to do with your moods as well. So uh, yeah, no, I don't, I haven't had any clinical depression in a number of years. And uh, you just get into this zone after you've been on carnivore for a while. It's wonderful. It is. Very, you know, just relaxed and feeling peaceful. <laughs> No, and I, I totally can relate to that because sure, I'll have days of stress and moods that are not as good, but I'll never fall into that kind of cycle of almost desperation, right? That dark where it's just even hard to get out of bed. So I completely understand what you're talking about. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been you know, uplifting and it's um, just very realistic. And I think it's a good message for people that it's never too late to get back um, to healing and uh, wanting to have a you know better life, and so I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and all of the you know your journey for a long time working on your relationship with food and even just healing. And it wasn't just that you were getting off processed food because you were off it for a while before you even went carnivore. So it's such a amazing journey, and I appreciate you sharing it. Um, if people would want to get in touch with you, you know where can they find you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, I mean, I, I have gotten off of social media. I, that's oh. probably, yeah. Uh, it's, we won't go. That's another story, but um, <laughs> gosh, I don't really have a place for people to find me. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't have a YouTube channel or anything <laughs> like that. And I, I've written a book, but it has nothing to do with carnivore. So, uh, well, maybe, yeah. maybe people could reach out to me and I could, uh, you know, forward the email uh, to you or something. Um, 
So you, I remember you messaging me on Instagram. So you're not on Instagram anymore? Okay. No, I dropped off of uh, Instagram and, and Facebook. I wouldn't mind being yeah. on social media myself, but you know, I, but I also want to spread a message. So I think it's the balance. Um, but I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm on other social media. I'm just not on those two. And okay. uh, so, uh, but yeah, if they want to, if you don't mind, if, you know, if somebody has a question or wants to communicate with me, they can do that through you and then maybe okay. you can forward it to me and we can kind of take it from there. Yeah, I can do that. So I'll put my email in the show notes guys. And if you guys want to, you know, have a question for Mary, I will have her, um, I'll send the questions to her. So thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, I enjoyed so much. I didn't know all of this history of yours. And so I appreciate you coming on and sharing your journey. I know it's, you know, it takes a lot to do this. So thank you for sharing. It's a, it's a powerful story and I know it will help so many. I hope so. And it's just so good to have a virtual face-to-face with you. I I feel like I know you and I've really enjoyed it, Judy. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of what you're doing. Oh no, thank you. It's a pleasure um, having you on. So I will talk to you soon, Mary. Take care. Okay. You too. Bye. All right, guys. I hope that this interview was helpful. I hope it gives you encouragement to keep going and that a meat-based diet is healing. All right, guys, you know the drill. Make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.